All right, we're finally here. The midterm elections. America's sending a message that will resonate with critical decisions over the next two years that will lead to the election of a new president. And for the moment, numbers give us an indication of where all this is heading. So let's welcome John Bachman back to Midpoint with a look at what we are seeing thus far today, which is absolutely nothing just yet because nothing's really closed. So we got to look at issues and see where we're going from there. We do have some exit polling from Guam, and we'll get to that in just a second <laughs> about why that is Thank important. Thank goodness. But, Ed, we've talked about the polls and the key races. Right now we want to talk about some of the ballot issues that are uh, important around the country for different reasons. And they also bring people out to the polls. So that's why this could have an impact on these races. Now, when it comes to social issues, abortion is topping the list in states like Colorado, North Dakota, and Tennessee. Of course, we've seen this in the Colorado Senate race as well. Cory Gardner's support of this personhood amendment yep. caused him a lot of trouble initially from Mark Udall, but that never took really. Uh, and it was a one issue race for the Democrats. So, um, you know, th those laws will count unborn children basically as people from the moment of conception, at least in Colorado, North Dakota, and partly in Tennessee, although the language is a little bit different. Tennessee does not go quite as far, uh, but it would also lay the foundation, some say, for future abortion restrictions. The Washington Post breaks down the likelihood of the amendment passing on a state-by-state -state basis in Colorado. They give it a strong likelihood of failure, but in North Dakota, they say it is likely to pass. Uh, also interesting to see the spread there, the way fe people feel about this in different parts of the country. Another social issue, if you will, on the ballots in some states, marijuana. This is why we talked about this in Guam. It already passed there. People of Guam voted in favor of medicinal marijuana. It's also on the ballot in some other states, Alaska, the District of Columbia, and Florida, and Oregon. With the exception of Florida, the measure would legalize the recreational use of marijuana in those other states. The Sunshine State, it would just be for medicinal use. Right now, the Washington Post breaks down the likelihood of passage in each state. Looks like D.C.'s initiative has the greatest chance of passing, followed then closely by Oregon. There was some strong support in Florida for the medicinal marijuana measure, but that has trailed off recently, and we don't think that one's going to pass. It would surprise me if it did pass, because certainly talking to a lot of people that I know, they've said that this really, because it's the constitutional amendment, they've decided that that's just the wrong way to go. Yeah, and you know, we had an issue in the state of Florida with uh, with prescription pills, prescription painkillers, and a lot of folks remember that, how badly that was the abused. pill mills, sure. And that was used in a lot of the campaign commercials as a reason not to support this initiative, so a lot of that support has fallen off. And a third issue on the ballots is the minimum wage issue. This is on the ballot in Alaska, Arkansas, and South Dakota, if passed those states would raise their state minimum wage to a point that a lot of Democrats would like it to see pass. But this has been pretty popular. Unlike the so-called war on women, there's been a lot more support for this mostly Democratic initiative uh, in these states. It was also uh, contested by Republicans in Arkansas, but the state Supreme Court there allowed it to stay on the ballot. All right, John, we're going to see you in short time because we're going to be back here all night. Reminder to everybody once again that we are going to be here beginning at 7 o'clock, the pregame show, Steve Molesberg from New York. He'll bring us the countdown to the midterms and then 8 o'clock Eastern time until midnight. John Bachman, the entire team from America's Forum and yours truly, we will be here as well to cover the midterms, so stay with us. Go get some sleep. All right. <laughs> all right. Speaking of the countdown to the midterms, one of the races that we have been watching and one that we will watch all night long is in places like Georgia, where it's going to get interesting. Republicans and Democrats are looking for a miracle in Georgia's Senate race. Both parties want to pull out a win on Election Day, but as this race heads down to the wire, political analysts say that is not likely going to happen. Here's what it boils down to. Georgia is a runoff state, meaning if one candidate doesn't get more than 50% of the vote, the top two vote-getters must then battle it out again. The candidates, Republican David Perdue and Democrat Michelle Nunn, are vying for retiring Republican Senator Saxe Chambliss's seat. The two are locked in a dead heat. Despite the millions of dollars being poured into this race, neither one is pulling ahead in the polls. Plus, there is a Libertarian candidate who's siphoning votes away from both. If this race goes to a runoff, that election won't happen until January 6th, meaning Purdue or none wouldn't join their colleagues until three days after the new Congress is sworn in, and that's only if there isn't a recount. There are a lot of ways the House of Cards could fall on Election Day, but there is a possibility the outcome of this race could change the balance of power in the Senate or tie it up. In that case, Vice President Joe Biden would be the deciding vote, and Democrats would still be holding on, barely 